Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's geometry class. Today we're going to talk about measurements of segments and angles. Okay. First of all, before we do anything, we got to talk about distance. Now, I know you've you've learned about distance of two points on an xy coordinate plane. But we're just talking about just simple linear distance, distance of a segment. And it's actually a very simple formula. It's just small minus large. Small what? It's the smallest value minus the largest value. OK? Literally, it's, it's that simple. Now, a lot of you are like, yeah, can't we just count? Yeah, not really. Because what if you're at? Negative 18 is one of your endpoints, and then you have positive 47, the other endpoint. That's a lot of counting, right? But if I had at negative 18 and 47, it'd just be the absolute value of negative 18 minus 47, and then it would be that sum, which I believe is 65. Okay? Yes, sir? Um, no. Because if you just add them, negative 18 plus 47 will not give you the right answer. So no, you can't just add them. But thank you, sir. Thank you for asking, sir. So as far as measurement goes, OK, let's just check this out. You, you know what a, what a ruler is, right? OK, you have rulers in metric system, and you have it in the imperial system. And the imperial system is not working. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Here we go. Imperial is like inches, OK? And metric is kilometers, centimeters, all that good stuff. I know you probably learned this before, but whenever you're making a conversion okay, in metric, it's very simple if you remember that it's all on base 10. It's all based on decimal values. So I always teach King Henry died, unfortunately, drinking chocolate milk, OK? Now, how does this help us? Well, it's very simple if you just look at where you're going. All right, if I'm at 13 kilometers, and I want to know how many meters that is, well, I'm starting at kilometers, OK? The units of any metric system is going to be m for meters, that's distance, g for grams, that is um, weight, and L for liters, that is capacity or volume, usually with liquids, OK? So if I'm at 13 kilometers and I need to know how many meters, first thing I want you to notice, there's an M here and an M here. All of these letters here, though, my friends, are prefixes, OK? Kilo, hecto, deca. So kilo, hecto, deca. Deci, centi, milli. The M by itself is just a meter. I want you to be very careful with that. This M here does not exist without another letter. This is either mil milligram. Why is this not working? There you go. Milligram, millimeter, okay, or milliliter. But the M by itself, it's meter. So I'm going 1, 2, 3 to the right. So literally, take your 13, move your decimal 1, 2, 3 to the right. So it would be 13,000 meters. OK? I'm sure you've all done that before. Some teachers teach it by multiplying powers of 10 or dividing powers of 10. I find it easier just to move the decimals according to its placement, OK? Now, a protractor. A protractor is basically a ruler for angles. And the way this works, there is always going to be an initial side. The initial side is where you would put your protractor on. So if I drew this line here, say I drew this angle right here, I drew this angle. And I went through there, OK? This guy down here, this red guy right here, that's my initial side, it's called. 
okay? And where the angle ends, I'll do it in blue right quick, that's my terminal side. Kind of like at the airport, the terminal, it's where you stop walking, where you end. Okay, terminal side, it's where it terminates, where it ends. So if I were to take this and use a protractor on it, so I go to right there, okay? It's going to be 81 degrees. A protractor has two levels, and you must be cognizant of which level you're using, okay? If my initial side is over here, which in this case it is, I'm starting at the zero. I'm at the top level. I'm at the top level. And as I go up and up and up and up, I read this top level. Does that make sense? Okay. If I were to switch that, now my terminal, my initial side is over here. So now I'm reading from the bottom. So if I were to go ahead and take this angle, let's, get, let's say go over here. Okay, that's 130 degrees. It's 130 degrees, roughly, 131. You're using the bottom side in this particular case. Sir? Yes, they're both degrees, both the top and the bottom are degrees. It just depends where your angle is, right? Because think about it. If you use the top one for this particular angle, that would mean that this is a 50-degree angle. Does that make any sense at all? No. And in case you don't know why that doesn't make any sense, we're going to now go into the different types of angles. And an acute angle is an angle whose measure is between 0 and 90. Okay? It's an acute angle. So that helps you understand the reading of a protractor. If you look at this angle here that we created right quick, it's large. That's definitely greater than 90. So that would not be an acute angle. An acute angle is something that is greater than 0 but less than 90. Not 90 either on the, on the money. Like that, that's an acute angle. That's an acute angle. That is an acute angle. Even if I went 89.999, that's an acute angle. Anything greater than zero but less than 90. A right angle. A right angle, I know all of you know, it's an angle whose measure is exactly 90 degrees. A 90 degree angle will always, if it's 90, unless you have to prove that it's 90, if you have a 90 degree angle, they give you a 90 degree angle. You're going to know it's a 90 degree angle because of that symbol there. And we'll talk about it later in much, much, much greater detail. But a right angle is exactly 90. An obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is like the angle we first drew, the one that was 131 degrees. An obtuse angle has a, a measure that is greater than 90 but less than 180. It's not equal to 90 because that would be a right angle. It's not equal to 180 because that would be what's called a straight angle. An obtuse angle is an angle that is larger than 90 but less than 180. And a straight angle is an angle whose measure is exactly 180. A straight angle, as I'm sure you have seen before in the past, is simply just a straight line. Okay? A straight angle is just a straight line. There's nothing fancy about it. That's a straight angle. Sir? The initial side? Correct, sir. Thank you so much for that question. The question was, the initial side, is it a straight line? Yeah. Or yes, it is. It's always. So it's either going to start from here and go up this way, okay? Or it's going to start from here on the left side and go up, let's say, this way. 
but the initial side is always a straight angle. Very good observation, son. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, for how the right angle, there's that little... For the right angle, there's a little tiny square that defines it. Yes, sir. Um, yes, there is something to find the straight line. It's straight. Um, <laughs> but there's no symbol. What if it was like 179 if it was 179 degrees? Okay, let me show you what it would look like on the protractor instead of me trying to estimate it. Thank you so very much. 179 degrees it would be barely, it would barely be noticeable, but you will notice. There's going to be a little tiny angle there. Okay? Thank you so much. But no, there's no symbol per se that says, hey, look, this is a straight, a straight angle. That's a very good question. I'm very impressed. May I continue, gentlemen? Thank you. All right. So now, parts of a degree. This gets a little crazy. So we really, really, really have to understand this, please. Okay? So ask questions all you want. A degree is symbolized by this degree symbol that you see right here. Okay? Um, and this is wrong. It's not a degree. This is wrong. It's a mistake. A minute is symbolized by uh, an apostrophe, basically. Basically. And a second, like a second, is symbolized by kind of a quotation. All right? And this is very mathematical. What happens here is 60 minutes equals 1 degree. And 60 seconds equals 1 minute. So 60 minutes equals 1 degree. And 60 seconds equals one minute. When we're talking about engineering and we're talking about revolutions and engines and cool things like that, uh, angles for satellites, uh, TV production, stuff like that, we're talking about degrees, minutes, and seconds. It's the most accurate way to describe an angle. So let's learn first how to convert, okay, something that is in degrees to degrees and, uh, and seconds, okay? Or degrees and minutes, it depends on what, what we're given. Okay, guys, so I have 87 and a half degrees, okay? Half of a degree. How many how many minutes are in one degree? So wouldn't this be safe to say this is 87 degrees and then half of 60 is 30 minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, we're going to go real slow with this because I want to make sure that you guys got this. Yes, sir. Come again? It does affect the 87. This is 80 degree, 87 degrees, degrees, and 30 minutes. Does that make sense? You sure? Okay. How about um, 60.4 degrees? Well, this is going to be 60 degrees and... 0.4 of a degree. So if there's 60 minutes in one degree, 60 times 0.4, we're talking about 24 minutes. So 60 degrees and 24 minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now, 90 degrees. This is a tough one. I want this in degrees, and I, and I screwed up here. I should have put minutes. Sorry. Seconds is the next one. If I want this in degrees and minutes, well, this is a tough one, but if you think about it, 90 degrees 
could be represented as 89 degrees and 60 minutes. Because doesn't 60 minutes create 1 degree? And 1 degree plus 89 is 90 degrees. Does that make sense? How about 180? Yes, sir. Um, you wouldn't, 88 degrees and 120 minutes. I guess technically, I guess technically you, yeah, I guess technically you could do that. Yes. Yes. Technically. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Now, how about this guy? 180 degrees. Sir. You made 179 degrees. And 60 minutes, yeah. Now let's expand it with the way my board was thinking. Could I also do, let's see. Could I also do 179 degrees, 59 minutes, and 60 seconds? Would I be able to do that? 100%. Does that make sense, guys? So whenever they give you a fraction or a decimal of a degree, Multiply it by 60, and that will give you the minutes. No. No, no. Because once 60 seconds is one minute, right? What's 59 minutes plus one minute? 60 minutes. 60 minutes is one degree, making that 180. Thank you so much for paying attention. Okay. Now let's go backwards, guys. What if I tell you I want these converted to just simply degrees. You're going to divide it. Very good. Thank you. So this would be 60 degrees and 45 divided by 60. What's that going to be? That's exactly correct. So this would be uh, 60.75 degrees or 60 and three-fourths of a degree. How about 35 degrees and 40 minutes? Well, this is going to be 40 over 60, which is 2 thirds. So this would be 35 and 2 thirds degrees. So when you're going from degrees to minutes, you're going to multiply the fractions by 60. When you're going from degrees and minutes to just degrees, you're going to divide by 60. OK? That makes sense. Now, before the bell rings, we're not going to finish, but I'm not going to stress. I want to do this one real quick. What if I told you 40 degrees, 20 minutes, and uh, let's say uh, 30 seconds? Now, in this particular case, a little bit tougher. This is going to be your 40 degrees. Right? Plus 20 over 60, which would turn into degrees as well, correct? Plus 30 over, not 60, but 3,600. Think about it. If there's 60 minutes in one degree and 60 seconds in one minute, that means there's 3,600 seconds in one degree. So if you were to see degrees, minutes, and seconds, the minutes get divided by 60 to convert to degrees, and the seconds get divided by 360 to convert to degrees. 3,600, 3,600, man. Thank you so much. Guys, we're going to wrap it up here. Don't worry about tonight's one-two homework because it's not fair. You haven't finished it. We'll wrap this up tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. I hope you learned a lot. Bye-bye.